With Taylor Hall in orange and blue, the Oilers have a critical piece of their rebuild in place. Good job, bud. You did a lot of work. Yeah, good you. for you. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. It looks relieved. How cool would it be, eh, to go first overall in the NHL draft? Like, how? Every what an year. accomplishment. Player of the world. <laughs> I do. He's a good kid. He's a great kid. There's no time to celebrate now, however. Steve Tambellini makes a play for another high first rounder. We spoke to every every team that had a first round pick on whether or not uh, they were interested. Want to send somebody over there? The subject of their interest has been on the team's radar since the final pre-draft scout meeting at Predator Ridge, British Columbia. This boy told us in his interview he'll play in the NHL at 19. That's how confident he feels he is in his development that'll, that's coming forward. Felt that if this guy got to play another month, he might move up into the number two spot. Like wow. he's, he's got, I think he's got unbelievable potential. We've had a bit of a void in our organization uh, for a period of time. It's been, it's been at center. Johansson is a, a player that really came on this year. But he's, you know, and he seems to be, you know, the prototypical centerman uh, in, in the sense that he's got size and he can skate and pass the puck. The Oilers are keen on Johansson. They ask for everything. <laughs> Well, I guess why not? But the asking price is just too steep. And, uh, we thought that we could maybe get a top, uh, another top five pick. These are the players that they're going to ask for. If I was another manager and I was looking to move up into the top uh, segment of the draft, that's who I would be asking for too. There's no chance that Jordan was going to be part of that package. It's 5'9 in the band of draft. Wow. <laughs> He's the seventh round pick, wasn't he, too? The remainder of round one passes without a deal. The Oilers pack up for a return to their hotel and deliberations on pick number 31, the first player chosen in tomorrow's second round. Hey, boys. One great square space with Pitlick's there. He's a hell of a player that we're going to bypass him and go to a defense. I don't mean to argue with you, but it doesn't make sense. We need defensemen. This Pitla kid is a different kind of kid. I mean, he, he's going to play. The debate hinges on a choice between American centerman Tyler Pitlick and ranging Slovak defenseman Martin Marinson. If we take Pitlick, he's the best player, not considering position. If, if Marinson's there at 40, 48, we'll, get, we'll take him. If not, if you're going to tell me we're going to take Pit, Pitlick and Marinson in the second round? <laughs> I'm happy. Let's, yeah. let's get out of there. Yeah, start the third round right tomorrow. Let's go. Edmonton is proud to select from Mankato State Center Tyler Pittman. Long way to <laughs> Makes it worthwhile. As round two unfolds, the Oilers find themselves able to get both highly regarded picks they hoped for. Very pleased with today. Very pleased. Stu did a great job. You know, we pushed people. Over. They responded. It's happy with them. We've gotten bigger. We've got some guys down the middle. We've got some forwards that can play on the wall. And we got Taylor. And we got Taylor. <laughs> Back in Edmonton, the Oilers are cleaning house. And nobody, it seems, is safe. The first, I'll, I'll make the announcement, first of all, uh, that Pat Quinn uh, is going to take on the role of senior advisor to hockey. Very excited about that. And Tom Rennie will be our new coach, head coach of the Oilers. Does this feel like a promotion? It doesn't really sound like one. 
No, and I, I'm certain it's not in the sense of, uh, you know, that it's not uh, my decision. Um, I uh, had been looking forward to, to coaching uh, the team next year. A decision was made that they'll have a place for me to continue to help them make their changes, uh, which uh, I will uh, move to. I had met with Steve uh, uh, late one night, and, and um, we talked about our coaching situation and uh, the dynamic of, uh, of us. He felt that he needed to make a change. Uh, we talked over what I would bring to the team, how I would handle certain things uh, you know, with the squad, being that it would go in this direction of being young, uh, impressionable, um, you know, those types of things. So we, we talked it over uh, briefly. Um, you know, coaching is in the blood of all of us uh, that do this. And so certainly when presented that opportunity, uh, naturally, I felt compelled to accept the opportunity to head coach the Oilers. I have great respect for him. Uh, the plan, uh, we were going to move Pat into a, a different type of situation. Uh, the succession plan was moved up a year. And I thought, is it, should I go through another year uh, and keep it the same? Or should we, if we're moving so many pieces here, is it better off? Let's just get on with it. But a change behind the bench is just one step in the overhaul. There are significant moves on the ice as well. I think we were very clear in our message that we needed change. That started basically at the trade deadline, where we were able to give ourselves some flexibility of moving some bigger salary contracts. We knew that there was going to be change, whether through buyout or trade. We had to move our captain, Ethan, who has been a wonderful oiler. They were hard decisions. That's the worst job but the manager has, is has, having to let people go. But with free agent day just around the corner, one very big change remains in limbo. Sheldon Sure has asked to be traded, and that won't be easy. Um, it hasn't been anywhere near ideal for me or the team, and it, it started early and um, leads me to where I am today. 